If I had to look back in my coffee journey and pick a clear before and after point, I'd probably say it was the first time I visited a coffee farm. There's just something about being in the nature, seeing the conditions, how hard it actually is to grow coffee, that really makes you respect the cherry. But for some reason, many uh, coffee people never get to experience the origin. I don't know if it's because they think it's uh, too difficult or expensive or that it's just not worth it. So today I'll share my tips on how to visit a farm, what you'll get out of it, and of course also some uh, practical tips that can make your trip a little bit easier. Oh, and before we start, let me just show you a couple of pictures from my trip so you can get the motivation going and we can start dreaming a little bit. So these pictures here are snapped on the Indonesian island of Sumatra at a place called Lake Toba probably the most beautiful coffee place I've ever seen. They grow a lot of coffee here and other fruits as well. It's just a nice place to visit. Uh, I have an article about my trip to Sumatra, so you can just search online for Coffee Chronicle Sumatra if you want to read about uh, my trip over there. This footage here is from India at the Tibanahali estate, an amazing place for nature, but you also have some super interesting history and culture to dive into. So that's the kind of thing you can experience at a coffee farm, so I hope that will give you a little bit of motivation to consider this option. My tip number one is to visit the bean belt. This is probably the first and most obvious thing that keeps most people away from coffee farms, and that is that coffee grows in exotic locations and faraway countries. And yes, I'm not going to deny that, Coffee mainly grows around the equator, but we can actually extend that range quite a bit. And then we have what is sometimes called the bean belt. Arabica coffee likes growing in mountain areas, and especially the closer the coffee is to the equator, the higher the altitude needs to be for the coffee to thrive. But that also means that if you go to places that are kind of at the edge of the bean belt, then you don't really need to go up to the same high altitudes because it will be a little bit colder, so the coffee is not going to get burned from too much sun. Also, these regions tend to get a little bit overlooked, even though they are super easy and really cool places to visit. For example, did you know that Taiwan, China, Thailand grows a lot of coffee? And since it's the outer edge of the bean belt, you only have to go up to around 1000 meters of altitude before you can find a lot of coffee. There are actually some really surprising places that grow coffee as well. Many Europeans travel to the Spanish island of Gran Canaria, and even over there you can find coffee just one hour's drive from Las Palmas, the capital. So next time you plan a holiday trip, then consider if it could involve some part of the bean belt. If you go to Bali or Costa Rica to hang out on the beach, you might as well also check out a coffee farm when you're there. My second tip is that you actually shouldn't be afraid to arrange your own trip. There are some coffee tours and companies that can arrange farm stays and those kind of things. And it's a really good option if you have it. But uh, I would also encourage you to visit coffee regions by yourself if you're just a little bit adventurous. Many people think that, oh, you have to go to the proper farm. But actually, the reality is often that coffee is just growing semi-wild in the backyard, uh, around people's house, along the road. A lot of locals will be drying it out in front of the house, so it's not like you have to go to some far away farm area. I think if you're new to coffee or don't know much about processing, then it does make sense to have a guide with you, or at least somebody who can translate and you can get a little bit of information from the locals. But you can also just watch some YouTube videos about processing and then you'll have a pretty good feeling for what's going on. So the next question you probably have is how are you going to find that coffee farm? I'd probably just do what I do with almost anything nowadays and that is to do a Google map search. Just uh, search around different areas for coffee farm or coffee farm homestay and uh, then you might be able to find some uh, good spots like that. A coffee homestay can also be pretty cool because usually the people who run that kind of stuff, they will be able to talk to tourists, explain things, and uh, they can also help you with uh, practical issues. Another good thing about uh, using Google Maps to find coffee farms is that you can also get a little bit of sense of the road conditions. Some farms are hard to reach, but if you're going up to a more regular village, then you can often just do it in a completely normal car. You don't even need a four-wheeler to go there. And that leads me to the next practical tip. So let's just jump to the coffee farm so you can see what I mean. So as you can see, the weather here, pretty misty, pretty foggy. And uh, this is what often happens in coffee farms. Even though you're close to the equator, it can be uh, easily be quite cold and misty, foggy because the farms are at such a high altitude, the weather conditions can change uh, quite rapidly and it can be pretty chilly in the nighttime. 
bring some uh, different clothes, good shoes, can easily get muddy. So my next tip is also about being a little bit uh, practical in your planning. And here I'm thinking specifically about the time of year. Coffee is a natural product, so that means you'll have a season. So obviously it's a lot more fun to visit the farms when you have red cherries on the trees and you have some processing going on, some more activity. The whole wash process at the washing station looks really cool. Natural and honey is also beautiful to see for the first time. So I would encourage you to go during the harvest season or around that period. I actually made this mistake when I was in India in October last year. And even though I had a great trip, the planning was just a little bit off. So the harvest season doesn't start until a few months later. And at the same time, I was also around a month too late to see that interesting thing that is called the monsooning, that monsoon Malabar thing, where they are kind of slow drying coffee along the ocean. So I should just have planned things a little bit better. I was staying at that beautiful estate called uh, Tipanahali, and I could just imagine how interesting it would have been to be there at the busiest time of the year during the harvest. On the other hand, I was lucky to be there when the Aeropress Championship was going on, and uh, I was invited to be a judge. I had a lot of fun, uh, spent time with uh, cool coffee people like Suhas, uh, Vignesh, many more, who uh, showed me around the city and introduced me to a lot of coffee things I wouldn't otherwise have seen. So that leads me to tip number four, and uh, that is actually to interact with the local coffee scene, uh, meet some people, uh, visit some coffee shops. Actually, in many of these coffee origins, there are some really interesting things going on locally. And uh, I think if you can get a chance to engage a little bit with that, then you'll have an amazing time. Especially in Southeast Asia, you have many young locals that will have one leg in farming, maybe the family is from the mountain, and then they will work as baristas and roasters. And that does really give you a different perspective on coffee when it's, you know, family business, so to speak. So if you're traveling from US or Europe to one of these places, then just bring a few bags of coffee from your local roaster and give it to a young barista, and then you're definitely going to make some friends. Also, Instagram is a surprisingly good way to make some uh, connections. You'd be surprised how many uh, coffee farmers are actually on Instagram. If you've bought coffee from the country you're going to visit, uh, then you can also just try to search around online, see if you can uh, find that specific farm. Actually, that's what I did recently. I was in Northern Thailand, and then I searched for the Ma family, one of the top ranked coffees in the Cup of Excellence uh, recently. And then it turned out they had a homestay, a little cafe and a restaurant. And uh, I just had an amazing time there. And when you're there, of course, spend some money, buy some beans and other products if they have it to show some support. Coffee tourism is uh, definitely not a big business uh, currently, but I think it has potential and uh, it can also help uh, everybody involved. Uh, everybody can get something out of it. Uh, I think as a consumer, you will uh, get a lot more appreciation when you realize the hard work that goes into being a coffee farmer. For a while, I've also been thinking about doing something like that to put farmers and coffee travelers in touch. And I plan to make a little bit of a database to facilitate the coffee travel. So if you're a farmer, or you're from a coffee region and you want to help people visit a coffee farm, then I have a form down below in the description and then you can just fill it out and then hopefully I can make some kind of page that can connect travelers and farmers who are interested in getting visitors. If you've been to a coffee farm, then of course I'd also love to hear where you went, how was the trip, tell me about it down in the comment section. That's it for today, I will see you in another coffee video very soon.